Did you get the uh, questions that I sent? I did, but I didn't read them. So I'm usually better. I'm usually better off the cuff. Hey everybody, this is Michael Bradshaw, creative director at uh, VaynerMedia. And this is uh, my conversation with my boss, the CCO, uh, Steve Babcock. He's the chief creative officer here at Vayner. Uh, it's about a 45 minute conversation. We diced up for you. Uh, hope you enjoy it. If you have any uh, questions, just hit me up at, Mal at Malcolm816, M-A-L-C-O-L-M 816. Um, hope you like it. All right, bye. So uh, we're here with Steve Babcock, uh, CCO of Vayner Media. Uh, I'm Mike Bradshaw. I'm the guy who's been posting on uh, the VaynerMedia social accounts uh, this week. Uh, I guess the deal is, is that, first of all, full disclosure, I'm new here. I've been here for three months. Uh, and my understanding is that everyone gets a churn at um, manning the helm mm -hmm. of uh, the social media platforms at VaynerMedia. And I guess... There was a conflict. I don't know how I got thrown in at the last minute. Oh, you weren't <laughs> even first pick. No. You were like a substitute. Yeah, I'm totally <laughs> just to fill in. All right, good to know. They were like, we need somebody. <laughs> Is anyone available? And I was like, well, I'm new. This will be a good way. Michael will do. <laughs> I was like, this will be this will be a good way to get some FaceTime with Babcock. Yeah, so uh, here we are. It worked. The plan worked. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, CCO means Chief Creative Officer for, I know we have a lot of listeners who are in the industry. We also have a ton of listeners who are not, who are, or who are trying to break in. CCO stands for Chief Creative Officer, and that means you're the head creative. Like, you're the guy. Correct. There's no one more creative than you other than Gary. <laughs> Well, I don't know if there's anyone more creative than me. There's plenty of people more creative than me. In fact, hopefully everybody is, uh, if yeah, I'm doing my job right. Yeah, but uh, there's no one that has an additional C in their title more than me. I guess I have more C's. <laughs> you have the most C's. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, um, I know. I just remember when I first heard the term creative as a job you could have. It blew my mind. I know exactly where I was, what I was doing, uh, how old I was, um, and it just absolutely floored me that you could just do this and get money for it. Uh, and with, in, in your mind, for from an agency and media perspective, what is creative as a job? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's really simple. I think creative in this industry is the art of getting people to care about something they don't care about. I mean, that's that really is my definition. Uh, and you have to start with the fact that nobody cares about anything. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, that's especially when you're working, you know, on, on, on brands, you know, clients and things, which for the most part, nobody cares about your laundry detergent. Like no one cares. Mm -hmm. And it's actually that's not a thing to say to like bum you out or whatever. It's the exact opposite. It's like, OK, that's the challenge. And I'm going to utilize creativity to generate you know, uh, some attention to get people to care. And then to care enough to do something. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's really what it is. So it's, it, it's, not a, it's not tied to a medium, it's not tied to a discipline, it's not like creative as in, I know how to design or I do animation or I'm a good writer. Those are all tools, uh, you know, no different than a, than a plumber who's got different tools. You know, I, I don't know why I picked that analogy, I'm not a plumber, so I was, <laughs> can only name the monkey wrench is the only tool I know. Maybe the <laughs> snake, the drain snake. Those are tools that you use, mm -hmm. but the, the, I know why I'm doing the analogy, but the leak we're trying to fix is to make people <laughs> care about, about something. Mm -hmm. And, but it is, a, but it is craft. I think that's an apt comparison. It's something that you. Absolutely. Right. I mean, there's, you, but again, it all comes back to without that craft, you know, are you going to achieve that goal of making someone care? Mm -hmm. Even in just like straight up art. There's a lot of artists out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists out there. Same with music. A lot of great musicians. But the ones who are really good or exceptional are the ones who make people care. The ones who build the audience. The one who, mm -hmm. find, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that's no different in, in what we do. I would say except we're even a little more behind the eight ball because we're using our creativity on behalf of advertising, which already has like, mm -hmm. uh, I, I not only don't care about that, I hate it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to advertise. You know, it's like, so we have an agenda 
So it's very, very important that whatever we do, because the craft can be, you know, I always talk, you solve it in strategy. Like so much time needs to be spent up in the why someone would care and what can we do to get them to care. Then the actual like craft of like how it's filmed or you know what color palette is used, typography, those are very, very important. They can actually break the deal if you don't get them correctly, but they're all part of it. There's not one part that's more important than the other. It's like collectively, how can we get someone to care about something? Some of the best things in the world weren't really ads. They were ideas. They were a thought that if we can put that out into the world, sometimes you'll use an ad to put it out into the world. Sometimes you'll use an operational change to put it out into the world. Um, but when you have that, you know, that's what makes people care. And that's, that's what we do. That's what creative is. Awesome. And it's a question I'll always ask. Even if someone comes to me and is like, this thing we did, or this thing I saw, you know, it was amazing. It was check out, you know, so beautifully shot. And I'm like, did anyone, does no one cared? <laughs> it has zero, it has 12 views and you put paid behind it. You know, it's like, that it doesn't matter. Like, we've got to make people care. Interesting. It's almost like it's a, it's, there's two jobs, right? It's, it's, you have to make, you have to make something beautiful, something engaging. And then you also have to make people know about it and invest themselves in it yeah. in some way. Right. Yeah. 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 And that things are all intrinsically linked, right? You know, obviously for like back in the day when we were all we were ever, you know, making were television commercials, it became very c clear quickly that like a very beautiful cinematic, high quality, very expensive productions, you know, would, would make people care. They would, you know, you, you, you pay for the bigger explosions and the bigger director and the bigger soundtrack and all these things and that would really do that. Um, as we moved into the world we're in today, production values are, is very interesting. In fact, uh, because all the mediums have all their different standards and the different ways that a consumer, you know, consumes their platform. So mm. if you did something you know, cinematic TV quality on Snapchat, for example, it would almost be the opposite. It'd be a little off-putting because it's like, yeah. that's so obvious that it's an ad on a platform that is designed to be shot on your phone natively and then designed with your finger, you know? like. Mm -hmm. um, and so the art of making someone care is very contextual based on who that person is, what the vehicle is that you're gonna use to reach them, and et cetera. So, even then, like the craft gets, it gets really, uh, it's harder to define. I can only define the result. I can't define any of how something is done to get there. Mm. I can only define like, did anyone care or not? Like that's all that matters. Right, and, and that's really interesting. You, you bring up a, a fascinating point that the, that the stakes that we have in, in that caring are dependent on completely different criteria today than they were 10 years ago, to your point about the uh, the, the craft of creating a, a beautiful Super Bowl ad, mm -hmm. like an absolutely gorgeous cinema quality Super Bowl ad versus the uh, quality of a, of a Snapchat or Instagram story, or I should say it's just Snapchat ad, where actually low fi, the lower the fi, lower the fi, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> the lower the fi, the better. Yeah. Um, there's more engagement you're going to stoke. I mean, how do how do we predict that? How do we how do we plan for that? I think, I mean, the the only thing that anybody can do is just to be a practitioner in in platforms, right? You know, because um, you know, even even today, it's you can really tell when you see certain executions on platforms that you know anybody who is involved in making that execution isn't even active on this plot. You can tell, yeah. you know, when it's just like, well, this thing's studies show that this app is now really popular with this segment. So we should do a thing that's like, be, be a practitioner. It's probably one of the most important things in this business right now. I mean, it was really awkward for me. I felt it awkward, the awkwardness, you know, a year ago to be the only like 40 year old dad on Musical.ly. I mean, I sure wasn't the only one, but it was in my, you know, and I have a daughter who was on it, so it was cool, but I even, I even she was like 13, and so I can tell she's like, yeah, this is weird, Dad, you know, but I'm like, <laughs> hey, I, I need to understand this, and quite frankly, I wasn't even there to do homework. It was like, it was pretty fun. I had a really robust system for how to edit your videos and like mm -hmm. make things look really mm -hmm. cool. I was like, this is actually really great. 
Um, but even if you're not genuinely interested, well, if you're not genuinely interested in it, you might want to seek another another industry, but like at least force yourself to get in there and be in the know like, way more than reading about it. You can mm -hmm. learn way more about how something is consumed and and because the, there's the platform and then there's how people use it and they're mm -hmm. usually very different. Um, so, you know, the prediction part I would say is also just never, never understand that you will never arrive in the like, here's how we do it. Here's how it's done. Because it will never stop changing. So it's like, and that, and that shouldn't be frustrating either. It should be really exciting. Like right now, the industry, a lot of people are freaking out because things need to be produced for half the cost. They still need to be twice as good. And it has to be done in half the time. And instead of being you know, really frustrated about that, be like, all right, well, let's figure out how to do that. And next week, everything's gonna have to be even half the cost of what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanna survive in this business, that again is part of, that's part of being creative and getting creative. Like, yeah. So as a creative director here, um, one of the things that I've noticed uh, very early on is that we're always we're always kind of running together. We're always running as a herd, uh, kind of as a culture. And one of the challenges for me, um, you know, we have amazing clients and partners who really trust us, is kind of talking them through what exactly what you were saying before, like it being a practitioner, being part of what's happening at the moment, because it is the industry landscape is such that that kind of prescriptive. This is how you do it behavior is really, really, really helpful. But then we're saying like, there is no way to do it. Right. How do you communicate to clients? <laughs> well, my, my least favorite <clears throat> phrase in this industry is two words and it's called best practice. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's the actual phrase itself assumes that you've, you've discovered the ultimate best way to do something forever. Mm -hmm. you, you no longer need to innovate or try yeah, anything. You don't need you, us. You found the best practice. <laughs> yeah. um, and in marketing and in business, you know, everything's so driven around like, well, it's best practice for this. Because you don't want to make any mistakes. So mm -hmm. you want to, this is the best practice for this. This is the best practice. So if I just follow best practices, I won't fail. Versus like, well, how do I really, really exceed my win? You're not going to do that by following best practices. So I think best practices for me and that's a phrase that's used by a lot of the platforms and a lot of the platforms will speak directly to our clients and arm them with that information so that if we ever bring something mm -hmm. that is like well it doesn't actually follow that but here's what it does and here's why we believe boo boo boo, boo kind of gets just killed right away because it's not best practice mm -hmm. uh, i think you know that's something that we need to uh, like clients and agencies need to understand that like a best practice is no different than any other bit of factual information. It is something to observe and go, okay, that was, and learn from, but it, in no wise does it mean like that is the only thing you can do. So for example, one of the, one of the most famous best practices is on Facebook, you know, branding in the first three seconds of mm -hmm. a video. No. And all about uh, that one. And you, got, you have to break that down, right? Because you look at it and go, okay, well, why is that a best practice? And it's, you know, so you get that impression. But then it feels like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if Facebook is giving you that that as a best practice, then they're admitting or they're saying that no one watches your video on their platform. So if no one's gonna watch because they don't like to watch ads, at least make sure they see your logo before they go by. Mm -hmm. So to me, I say, well, okay, that's the best practice if you want, if you don't want anyone to watch. If you just want that blank impression, then that is proven to be the best practice because that works. Of course, if someone's just going to scroll by, you might as well at least let them see your low, at least get something out of the money right. you spent on it's that media buy. It's almost worst practice. Right, right. <laughs> but also versus looking at it and going, okay, nature of that platform, especially on the mobile devices, you know, you're, you're skipping, you're flying down your wall there, your feed. It's like, well, you just need to make someone, in the first three seconds, you have to have the hook. You have someone has to care enough to want to click in and watch the rest of your video. And a logo, by all of our studies, is the last thing that's going to make anyone want to do that because no one wants to watch your commercial. Yeah. So the best practice is completely, it, to what? It's, like I said, it's the best way to make sure you get impressions, but it's not the best way to make sure necessarily. Mm. Um, and so... <clears throat> I think any best practice, and all platforms have them, they're good to know, 
they're they're called best practices. There's, a, there's some tr- there is there's a reason they're statistically sound, but if you are driven by just trying to identify a best practice and follow a best practice, you won't you will never innovate. You'll never actually exceed, um, you know, whatever your benchmark is, and ultimately you'll make pretty unfulfilling work. You said the benchmark was making people care. 